Well, I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. In what sense is our society male dominated? Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a very, labor. Very tiny proportion of men, and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like. Where's the dominance here, precisely? Because everybody thinks discrimination is a bad idea, which is a very stupid proposition, because you're discriminating all the time. And the most fundamental form of discrimination is choice of sexual partner. And so you might say, well, why should that even be allowed? Because it is the most fundamental form of discrimination. So, for example, almost everyone is racially prejudiced when it comes to sexual partners. So you think, well, is that, is that a... What about, uh, are you... Do you use age as an exclusionary criteria? Probably. Do you use physical attractiveness? Only insofar as you're able, right? You use it completely if you could get away with it, roughly speaking, but you can't because the most attractive people aren't going to be anywhere near you. So you can't do it, but you'd like to. Health, yes. Strength, yes. Wealth, yes. Education, definitely. So what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived plus a myth and in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that, but I don't okay. know. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief and I don't <laughs> understand it. Like, because I've seen... Sometimes the objective world and the narrative world touch you know, that's Jungian synchronicity. Yeah. And I've seen that many times in my own life. And so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. You know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real, like we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world, but the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. The Marxists say, well, that wasn't real Marxism. What it really means, and I've thought about this for a long time, it's the most arrogant possible statement anyone could ever make. It means, if I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, that, instead of the genocidal massacres, because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. You don't understand it. You don't understand it. And you're not that good. And if the power was in your hands, assuming you had the competence, which you don't, you wouldn't have done any better. And even if you had, there would have been someone else waiting right behind you to shoot you the first time you actually tried to do anything good. And that's what happened to all the old guard who ran the damn revolution. How much responsibility do you feel that you have, particularly guys at the alt-right, who, as you say, some of them have enjoyed your work and say, no, I'm, not one of, I'm not one of you guys. I'm not with you guys. They haven't enjoyed my work. I've definitely read bits on the internet. Read more. I'm interested in people being able to have different choices and, um, and having equality of outcome. Aha. Well, so the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that? just out of curiosity. I, what about bricklayers? They're 99% male. And, the, and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities mm -hmm. in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. Thanks. To what degree is my pre present level of attainment or achievement a consequence of my white privilege? And I don't mean sort of. I mean, do you mean 5%? Do you mean 15%? Do you mean 25%? Do you mean 75%? And what do you propose I do about it? How about a tax? How about a tax that's like specialized for me so that I can account for my damn privilege you so that I can stop right hearing here. about it?
That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. You know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. Some, a journalist asked me why the audience, why people are responding so positively to what I'm saying. The young men, for example, and yeah. I thought, Hmm, why, why? Yeah, that's a good question. He says, well, I'm actually on their side. I'm really happy that, I'm really happy that they're not wasting their lives. I'm really sad to see that people are disenchanted and nihilistic and depressed and anxious and aimless and, and perverse and vengeful and, and all of those things. It's terrible. And then to see people question whether that's necessary and then to start to rise out of it. It's like, it's so fun. Like last night I was at, after my talk, it's overwhelming. I don't usually think about these things, but I was, I was after my talk last night, and so all these people line up, and you know, they have their 15, 15 seconds with me, and they're kind of tentative. They're excited and attentive when they come up to talk to me, and then they have you know, 15 seconds of time to tell me something. I'm really listening to them, and they're hesitant about whether or not to share the good news about their life, you know, and I think it's often because when people share good news about their life, people don't necessarily respond positively. You know, they don't get encouragement. And people need so little encouragement. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. And so yeah. they'll tell me something good, and I yeah. think, oh, that's so good. You know, somebody yeah. says, oh, I'm getting along way better with my father. I hadn't seen him for 10 years, and now we get along. It's like, yeah. God, yeah. great. Yeah. And then the, the power of that, you can't overstate the power of that for individuals to get their life together. The individual is mm. an unbelievably powerful force and every single person who gets their act together a little bit has the capacity to spread that around them. Mm. It's, it's a chain reaction and so it's a lovely thing to see. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think you have to risk being offensive. I mean look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> well, I'm you very get glad my, that I have no, but you get my, my point. Speech. You get my point. It's like you're, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But I you're exercising you do... your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think you, more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and I'm just trying I'm just trying to work that out. I mean Ha, gotcha. You have got me. You have got me. I'm trying to work that through in my head.